no helicopters have been procured for me to go to golf course. Thank you. I've never said he wasn't a great politician. I'm just saying he's a politician. first thing I do. How'd you play out there today? Uh, well, I found the conditions challenging. Mostly because there's no grass on the golf course. But there never has been. I'm thinking about the swag bag, and I, yeah. I hope the swag bag. Trash. When you got three crevices on the green, your course is trash. What's going on, folks? Welcome back. Bellway Golfer, episode 31, Alex Dixon here. Got a, a, a good show for you today, I, I think, with uh, the CEO of Five Iron Golf, which just opened up recently in Washington, D.C., uh, in Penn Quarter, right on 7th Street, uh, about a block, maybe less, from the Capital One Arena, um, and uh, sat down with Jared Solomon, the CEO and founder of Five Iron. Um, also uh, on this episode, got a co-host, uh, Ellis Gore, who's been helping out with Bellway Golfer, um, you know, big, uh, big golf around the area, and who was originally reached out to Jared and Five Iron and kind of got this episode going, so he joined me on the show, um, and, we, and we talked to Jared together, so I was excited to do that. Um, Want to give a shout out to um, the under nine Babe Ruth baseball team um out of arlington virginia the arlington storm my nephew sam is on the team and they just went on an incredible run um winning the state title down in williamsburg a few weeks back and then going on to a regional title uh at a, in a tournament in north carolina and then became the first team out of northern virginia to represent um arlington in the babe ruth world series down in florida uh, they made it through that tournament all the way to the final game. Came up one game short, but finished runner-up uh, in the in the World Series for Babe Ruth baseball under nine-year-olds. So big shout out to the Arlington Storm! Congratulations on the incredible run. Um, if you're following social media for Beltway Golfer, you might have seen that uh, uh, I had a fun round recently. Did uh, did the whole uh, camping out bit in Farmingdale, New York, at, at Beth Page Black, uh, which was uh, you know it was really cool. Uh, certainly kind of a bucket, lo bucket list course, bucket list kind of experience. Um, you know, the sleeping out thing really was, was, was pretty, pretty straightforward. You know, it didn't get a ton of sleep, got a few hours, but uh, uh, despite about a, a 30 minutes of, of chaos in the morning to, to secure that tea time, uh, it was pretty relaxed and pretty straightforward and, and had a great time despite the fact that uh, the course, uh, you know, kicked my butt. Um, but certainly recommend uh, anyone that's considered doing the whole camping out bit. It's, it's, people are extremely helpful giving you the uh, guidance on what to do and what not to do. And pretty, pretty easy to get a tee time. So to play a, 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 a Ryder Cup host, they're hosting the 2025 Ryder Cup um, for as, a, as an out-of-state resident, uh, peak time is 160 bucks, um, you know, morning weekends. Um, you know, I'm not sure there's a better deal in golf. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool, uh, and not and really not that hard to get on. Um, so that's it. Let's get to the episode again. Episode 31 uh, is the CEO of Five Iron Golf, Jared Solomon. Um, I'm, I'm pumped uh, as we talk about in the interview that, that Five Iron's here and the proximity to Capital One Arena. We, we talk about it in the episode, but you don't need to bring your own golf clubs. They've got nine or ten bays, and they've got a pretty big bar. So um, come uh, Capitals and Wizards and Georgetown Hoyas games and, and other concerts and, and, and different events going on at Capital Arena, it's going to be a great spot to hit before or after the event, um, either to you know swing, hit some balls for an hour uh, before or after, or just uh, I think a sneaky good spot to grab a couple beers. So um, let's just get to it. Here, it. here it is, episode 31, Jared Solomon, Five Iron Golf. Enjoy. Before we get into today's show, I want to talk to you for a second about a new sponsor of the Beltway Golfer podcast, Four Craft Cocktails. Four Craft has brought the original golf cocktail, the Transfusion, to golf courses, to the D.C. market. It's in, it comes in a 12-ounce can, pre-mixed with premium vodka, ginger, lime, and grape. So this is not a mixer. You don't have to pour it over your booze. The vodka is already in the drink perfect for on and off the course already had a couple incredibly refreshing if you're a fan of the transfusion which 
judging by my social media feed, I know a lot of folks are showing off their, their post-round and mid-round cocktails. Um, this is a perfect drink. Uh, they're based in Virginia, right down in Richmond, has recently got into the D.C. market and is available in northern Virginia at beer and wine stores now and, and will soon be at golf courses throughout the area. To, to find it, go to fourcraftcocktails.com. It's F-O-R-E, craftcocktails.com. And they've got a, a store locator on the website that will tell you where to find it. Uh, and by supporting Four Craft Cocktails, you're supporting Beltway Golfer Podcast. So if you're a fan of this show, definitely go find some, enjoy a few. So check it out, fourcraftcocktails.com. All right. Well, we're joined here on uh, on Zoom today with the founder and CEO of Five Iron Golf, Jared Solomon. So welcome. And the reason that we're, you're joining us because just opened up here inside the Beltway in, in Washington, D.C. So welcome, Jared. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. So uh, also joined for, for regular listeners of this podcast, got a co-host today, Ellis Gore. So uh, Ellis and I got an opportunity to check out your new facility, right, uh, I guess it's Penn Quarter, uh, right next to the arena. Fantastic location. Um, so wh- why don't we just kind of start there and, and ask what prompted you to come to D.C.? Uh, what are your thoughts on D.C.? You know, when, when did this, when did that all start? Yeah, I mean, it takes a year and a half to get a five iron location open, but we've been eyeing DC for a while and, and trying to find the right spot with the right ceiling heights and all that stuff. But definitely has been a high priority city for a while. And what's crazy about DC relative to some other markets is there's really not a lot of simulator golf at all or in, indoor golf at, at all in the entire city. So the idea of bringing the, not just five iron, but the entire concept to DC is really really exciting there is one existing and, I, and i'd be remiss of saying it because the owner of that facility was actually on this podcast uh but that was that was we were going to ask that at some point later on in, in in the in the conversation about just you know how how big this market is getting and, and how much cities can you know what, what the what the future of the market is but we'll, we'll get into that further into the conversation i think yeah look they i believe it's a one sin location although That's you can right. do, i certainly and they do a great job um City swing, they do they do a great job. I think they have similar values to us, and, and I'm sure they're they're doing well and are successful. I think when I say five, I mean like the 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 multi sim with the everything from the lessons to the corporate events to the leagues and all that stuff that you can do with with you know ten simulators versus one in terms of bringing the concept. But certainly, uh, they do a great job and are, are highly regarded in DC as well. Yeah, very cool. Um, hey, can I ask Jared? You mentioned you you guys were targeting DC for a while. What what is what is the reason for that? Yeah, I wish I could tell you we had some brilliant master plan uh, <laughs> that some fancy consulting firm did to tell us where Five Iron will succeed. But honestly, it feels like a city that we should do well in. Like I, I think the winters are colder than people think in the fall. It also gets hot, uh, but generally speaking, it's a great sports town. I think people like to drink there. We have a good location where hopefully we're not just a golf place, but a bar, a sports bar, really. I mean, you guys saw all the TVs that are there. We're trying to lean into that. So we're Caps and Wizards games, and we're really just a block away from there. So it's hopefully just being there, getting that traffic, having people eating, drinking, watching the game, hitting golf balls. So a little bit of that, too. I think it should do, you know, do well there. And obviously, there's big corporate culture there for memberships and corporate events and all that stuff as well. I have to ask, yeah. have you have you spent much time in, in D.C. prior to, to, to launching? Five Iron's based in New York. Yeah, so we opened in New York, and, and we're based in New York. That's correct. I have not. So these D.C.-specific questions, I will be uh, horrible in terms of answering. But uh, our co-founder, Nora, had spent some time in D.C., and she's she's been pushing D.C. for, for a while. That is, that's a place that we're going to do well in. Yeah. We're, well, we're happy to have you here, for sure. Uh, Alex, I mean, and I talk all the time how DC is, it's an interesting golf city because there's so many golfers and it's, it's got this reputation for not being a great golf town. Um, whether that's true or not is up for debate, but I think we all, we all know that in this city, there's tons of starving golfers and tons of corporate uh, presence downtown. So, I, I mean, we think it's a great idea. Um, and, and, and just to maybe go back a little bit on the origin story. I read somewhere 
you you were taking lessons on a simulator in in Manhattan, and I think um, you you ended up opening in 2017. But could you tell us a little bit just about like how this concept came about in the beginning? Yeah, I didn't grow up around golf or or really the country club money scene at all like that. Yeah. And I first came to uh, New York for for law school, but it was post you know kind of economic crisis and my wife my wife and I both went to law school in the city we actually both went to undergrad together as well so we went to undergrad and then law school together but uh post law school her best job was in Rochester New York which is really upstate New York five six hour drive away and I was in Manhattan and I had to find something to do for two years so I started taking golf lessons with uh, Mike Doyle who's co-founder of Five Iron in the back of a men's clothing store on a simulator and I was also playing a lot of, you know, ping pong at this place called Spin, which has like graffiti on the walls and is really sort of that entertainment vibe and seeing the corporate events and that. Um, and like, I, I just sort of saw something there where we could do the similar thing with golf and just seeing Mike's demand from clients saying, hey, I want a place not just to take lessons with you, but now, I, now I'm excited about golf and I want to practice. And there really wasn't a place in New York City to practice. And then obviously, you know, golf, people you you add the sports bar element to it and people eating and drinking and the leagues and the social aspect and that that was sort of the inspiration behind what we did early on yeah that i mean and that's that's something it's really interesting to me because we know alex and i were in there and when you when you walk in it's just like this really engaging spot looks really cool um you know i might just go there to not even hit golf balls but just to have a beer and a, a burger or something but obviously it's a place for a serious golfer to go to and and work on their game so i mean is you know i guess in that sense who is your ideal customer is it everything in between or or who are you mostly looking to attract in there we always talk about building an ecosystem i think yeah. that we we and golf you know in general has this obviously some of the wealthiest people in the cities that we're in but also some of the mm -hmm you know, the poorest people. We have people that play a ton of golf and are plus threes, and then you have the casual golfer. And then you have people that just want to have fun, right? So we always talk about being the best place for the serious golfer as well as the best place for the entertainment golfer. And I think that's the harder way to do it, but something that we try to lean into and do well. So as you guys saw, you know, every single bay has three cameras. So you're, and that's just a video you. On top of that, it's TrackMan and not even just TrackMan, the souped up version of TrackMan that's just for us uh golf pros that are that are awesome as well so if you're a serious golfer you're going to be grinding you're going to be showering going to work kind of thing and then i like to say the music gets louder throughout the day lights go down and you get more of that sort of bar bar vibe where people are just hanging out before the game uh watching the game doing whatever a little bit of that top golf feel that that uh you know people are familiar with i have to ask <laughs> Because the proximity of this location to the arena where the, where the Caps and the Wizards and concerts, uh, you're now in several different cities. Do you have any other locations that close to an arena? Because my follow-up question, what I'm getting to is, like, have you, have you thought through game nights, event nights? Will they be any different than, than your average night? Yeah, so we have... Uh... We have thought about it. We should probably think through it now that you mentioned it is probably a good idea. I'm sure that locally they're doing a good job with specials and things like that. Honestly, in, we're at Herald Square, where I'm sitting right now in New York. This was a block away from Madison Square Garden. But with COVID, there hasn't really been, uh, we opened this location in January, so we haven't really had a chance to see that traffic and leverage that traffic. I certainly think that we're going to be a top destination before and even after games just to hang out and, and have a drink. So we'll certainly be doing specials and obviously the games will be on the huge TVs that we have. So um, if all goes well, it'll certainly be, you know, the sports bar in that area where people hang out at. I, I think that's key. And that's one thing that I'm looking forward to, you know, even when, when Ellis and I uh, visited the DC location last week, you know, we both showed up with golf clubs. Um, however, there's golf clubs at five iron. So you don't, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. You don't, you don't have to bring your own clubs, right? No, I would say it's about 50, 50. The customers bring the clubs and use their own. And then plenty of customers bring clubs and then still use ours. They are 
always top of the line. So we have a range of, of the different brands. We're, we're brand agnostic. We have a range of the different brands from, you know, Mizuno irons to Betonardi putters and wedges, Callaway drivers, Mizuno drivers, TaylorMade drivers, Cobra. So we have a, an option of all of that. And every location, and this is something we pride ourselves on, has between 40 to 60 bags of, of high, high-end golf clubs. I mean, they're, they're clubs that you would use to play with. And you have everything from stiff shaft to regular shaft, senior flex, plus ones, all the different driver options um, and different flexes and lanes as well. And we really wanted to be a place where you are blown away by the selection of, of clubs that you have. And that's part of the experience. And we like to say for, you know, at most we charge $65 an hour for up to four people and you're getting to hit on, you know, a hundred thousand dollar track man simulator with a, you know, $3,000 set of golf clubs if you want to. So I think that's a pretty great value proposition and the people that care and, and are excited about golf clubs and equipment think it's an awesome feature of, of what we do. And, you know, sometimes the people who are drinking break the clubs, but we, we fix them or we get new ones and, and that's okay. I, I think I was there. What, what else about 30 seconds before I accidentally dropped one of your $500 drivers on the ground. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but also uh, anybody that's ever played with me knows that my clubs are crap. I don't, I don't spend a ton of money on clubs. So it was really cool to like come and, and, and play top of line club, but also going back to like, you know, I'm a, I'm a Washington Wizards season ticket holder. I'm a Caps fan. I go to concerts at the Capital One, Capital One Arena. The, the idea of like going down there a couple hours before whatever event you're doing, not having to carry your clubs, pop in for a couple beers, you know, with whoever you're going to the event with for uh, for, some, for a few holes of golf or, or, or a quick little game or, or after, I think is exciting. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's it's part of the reason we put it there. I think it's going to be a top spot for that. I'm really excited for it. I'm sure we're going to do, you know, the drink specials and, and things like that. I think we even had, uh, you know, a Capitals event already, you know, with some of the players. Don't quote me on that. But I think uh, we've already seen some interest from both of those teams and partnering with us and doing things. And um, it just makes a ton of sense. Also, all hockey players want to do is, is play golf. So I'm sure there's right. going to be plenty of uh, – plenty of interest there from the players just to have a place to hang out and I'm sure we'll we'll take care of them and you'll be seeing them around yeah no doubt yeah uh, just to go back on the clubs a little bit it, I was I was really pleased to see all the selection in there because you know you go to a your typical driving range and they might have like a barrel of 30 year old sand wedges and you know a real wooden driver and say hey if you, if you don't have clubs you can try one of these but um, it seems like it, you know, for serious golfers like Alex and myself and probably others that listen to this podcast, it's not only do you get to go and work on your swing, but you can be like, hey, there's some things in there I want to try. So uh, it, it was great to see that. Yeah, absolutely. The um, the other thing too, and Alex, we, we obviously have to get you at this. We have a, a fitting company called The Fitting Lab, which is a, a five iron owned company it's it's just your brand agnostic fitting we build the clubs in baltimore ship them to customers uh but the fitting experience itself is there as well so not only do you have like the, the made clubs obviously that are that are there for you to use if you're just renting a simulator by the way the, again the clubs are free to use it's not like there's an upcharge to use any of the clubs but then if you want that high-end fitting experience it's uh you know, it's three and a half, four hours. If you want the full bag, it's shorter, obviously, if it's just a specific club, but it's a really cool thing to do. Even if you're not, we call it the fitting lab for a reason. It's not just about getting you the right clubs practically. It's about a really cool experience where if you want to try blades, even though you're a 20 handicap, hit a few blades, right? If you want to try a, a longer driver or a five degree loft, because Bryson does it, go ahead and try it. And I think obviously at the end, you end up with the clubs that are right for you, but it's, it's supposed to be a fun and engaging experience where you get to sort of play around with different, different things. And that's a really cool aspect of five iron as well. Uh, certainly going to be a, a big piece of what we do there. And, um, you know, it's something that's free for members, which is, is something that we can talk about if you guys want, but it's, I don't know, it's something that we're really proud of and I think is great, but Alex, I mean, the best way to, the best way to understand it is go try it out, you know, on me and uh, tell me what you think the deal uh, absolutely I, I i listened to one of your other um uh one of your other interviews on another podcast and talked about you you, you touched on track man uh correct me if i'm wrong at, at some point you were using not just track man a couple of different brands and i'm just i'm, I'm curious 
um, A, it sounds, so, so they're all TrackMan simulators in DC, correct? Correct. And I'm just kind of curious, like, what your thoughts on, I, I imagine the way that Five Iron's grown, you got to be one of their biggest customers. Um, and, but, but like, where, where, why did you switch from multiple sims to just TrackMan? And then maybe just like, where, where do you see this technology kind of going in that whole simulator market? Yeah, I mean, that's a loaded question for us, uh, for sure. But I will say that TrackMan's fantastic. I think we're, I mean, this is crazy to me just saying it out loud. But I feel like we're the third largest buyer of TrackMan units in the world or something crazy like that. Maybe maybe that's not true, but it's, it's certainly one of their largest customers at this point. They're just a really great company to work with. And I think at the end of the day in this world, it, it's such a key piece of what we're doing that it really mattered to us to be with a company that, cared and supported us and invest in the things that matter to to us and making five iron a better experience right so they they do everything from custom software just for five iron but also on their own just really industry leading in terms of things like graphics and and software and, and the stuff that maybe they're not even as known for and obviously on the accuracy side of things and the credibility and the club bidding and the serious golfer the name track man carries a, a ton of weight for, for that person. But even, even for the casual person, I think over the last few years, they've taken the lead in terms of what they do for, um, you know, events and games and, uh, you know, virtual experiences that might be different than your typical TrackMan customer who wants to see their club path and club face and angle of attack and all of that stuff. So just a great company to work with. And, you know, we're, we're proud to partner with them. Do you get, I mean, let's, let's go with the fact that you're the, the, their third largest customer. I mean, at some point, um, you know, the, the, their biggest clients and their biggest customers, you know, get their feedback and, and impact on future development of the product and, you know, where their technology is going, what you're hearing from your customers and, and, and relaying that back to TrackMan for, for how they, they view their roadmap. I'm just kind of curious, where, where do you see or, or where do you think or where do you want the technology to go? Yeah, no, that's a great question. We have a fantastic feedback loop with them. Klaus, the CEO, was, was here in New York and, and stopped by, and everyone on their senior team, from the software people to the customer service and support are, are great. And they do care, and I think we're a great testing ground for a lot of what they want to do as a company, right? So it's been a great relationship with them. In terms of where it's going, I certainly think that, you know, graphics are gonna to continue to get better in terms of like the courses and things like that. They're going to add more courses. Really what I think is going to happen, which is going to be great for a place like Five Iron is the integration of like multiplayer stuff is, is the future, right? So you're gonna be able to, you know, hit play and you're, and you're gonna, automatically play against some other person on track man kind of thing like the, the way that a madden game you know evolved over the years where it's multiplayer and you're playing against other people so i think there's going to be a lot of integration like that even with the game side of things there can be on the league front just continuing to integrate you know right now we have we have 500 teams we'll have 500 to 700 teams nationally in the winter across all these cities and we will stream it on twitch and we'll we'll sort of hack integration essentially so that they're together but the future is a really dynamic way to have a dc location playing an event against a baltimore location or a baltimore location playing against you know a vegas location or something like that so everything from team integration to individual integration um and uh you know the the leaderboards and things like that i think all of that stuff is is coming sooner rather than later and will be really exciting piece of you know what we do it's like real life golden tea Exactly, exactly. The, uh, what, what I also like about it, Jared, is like, you know, there's not many golfers who can hit on a track man consistently outside of like touring professionals, you know, they bring them around with them everywhere. And, I, you know, you see more and more data coming into the golf world for the everyday golfer with, with things like track man. And I don't know if you know anything about Arcos, Caddy, the, the sensors that you can screw into your golf clubs and I just think it's really cool that, um, you know, now I can just go run a space even with my buddies and, and learn about my face angle, my swing path and, and really kind of get in, nerd out about my golf swing. Is, is that kind of, um, is that a mission for five iron as well to kind of democratize the golf data uh, as well? 
A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And you know, what's crazy. You mentioned like golf pros have it, you know, yeah. the top golf pros have it. Not every, every, and not every pro can spend $25,000 on, on a track man. So we have pros. Certainly you get bottom of the PGA and then corn ferry. They, they don't have $25,000 to drop. Some of them do certainly some of them do and, and whatnot, but there are plenty of tour players out there that are hitting on a track man is a luxury, right? Which is cr- probably sounds shocking. And then certainly anyone on a developmental tour or someone in college or things like that. I, I certainly think so. And also this is me speaking about me, I guess, but I, I think the challenge of understanding the data and understanding the golf swing is as interesting as scoring well in golf, right? I, you know, why you hit a slice or why you're duck hooking it is is really cool to kind of figure out and understand in sort of a numerical mathematical type way and, and sort of how to apply that, how to change it. I mean, just you one, mean watching Instagram videos isn't the right way to do it. <laughs> and I, I would say, I, I'll let you know when I figure out the right way to do, uh, to do the golf swing or how to figure it out. But the, um, even like small things like go, I would say go to a fire, go find a track man. And this is cool. Like you, go hit a ball and you'll find out you're five degrees over the top and then spend the next hour trying to hit a ball five degrees on from the inside. Right. And then you get to look at it on video and see like, Oh, this is what I had to do with the club to get to be five degrees inside, or this is what I had to do to close the face or open the face or something like that. So it adds this just really interesting color, I think, to the golf swings. Certainly people can uh, get too obsessed with it and, and overthink it and, and whatnot, but yeah, I think democratizing the, the numbers and, and it just adds interest to the game too, right? Like you go in there and you have a mission and a plan. You're not just hitting balls into the abyss on a driving range. You're, you're thinking about the numbers and you're thinking about the results in a different way. It's not just where the ball went, but it's why it went there. And, and I think that just makes practice more interesting and, and hopefully, you know, improves people's games. And, and you touched on that, but um one thing that that we saw when we visited the DC location that I had not seen before, and the one of your the, the general managers there, Logan, set us up, but is um, you've got tripods with cameras in every single bay. So TrackMan, you know, I, I would imagine most listeners of this or a lot of listeners have used TrackMan before, but and you get all the data, you can create an account on TrackMan that it sends it all back to your account. But you guys are actually taking video of the golfer as well and syncing that up. So you can, you can go back and watch the video of yourself, right? Yeah. It's one of the reasons we went to the wider bays and it's awesome. I mean, you go in at a 6am, 7am, you're going to see 10 golfers using the video. So half, just think about you're staring at this 16 foot wide, you know, projector screen, half of the screen is going to be your swing essentially. And then half is going to be the track man range data kind of stuff. And that's our own proprietary design in terms of how we, we did it. But yeah, you have two side cameras so you can see you know, that angle of your swing. And then you have the tripod in the back. Those three cameras are a hundred percent just for seeing your swing. And you can either have it play auto back. So after you hit the ball, you're going to see the result and then it's going to play your swing. You can even do it live. So if you want to sort of try to get in position and sort of be, you know, in, in live motion, looking at the, the screen, you can kind of use it that way as well, but it's an awesome feature obviously for lessons. And the other cool thing with the video you take a video from say down the line. So the, the tripod behind, you want to compare that swing to Luke Donald, or you want to compare it to Tiger Woods. Like there's a whole database on track, man, where you can compare that exact angle with that club. So you can say, I'm hitting a nine iron from, you know, I'm hitting a nine iron. I want to see what, you know, like I said, Luke Donald's nine iron looks like from behind. So you get the exact angle and the exact club from that guy. And then the way TrackMan software works, and it's just brilliant software is you can basically time it up. So you can see, from the time they start their swing, how long does it take to get hit the ball? And, and you can stop it at certain points and see where their club is and things like that. Obviously that's great for individual practice, but then for lessons and whatnot, it's, it's, it, it leads to a really high quality golf lesson to not just be able to say like, Hey, your elbow should be here, but to show exactly where your elbow should be compared to where a pro's elbow would be in the, in the golf swing. So I, I like to think that's a great feature of what we do. It's really something that serious golfers geek out over and are, are thrilled about. That's the video data I need, but the video data that I'm scared to see. <laughs> I, I'm scared to see a video of my own swing, let alone like compared to, to Luke Donald. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you guys look great. I'm sure you guys look great. <laughs> well, I mean, just just taking that a bit further, like there's so much technology in there. You know, you've got your track man, you got cameras, your screens, projectors, 
I mean, you have even just your back end like reservation systems and not to mention you have a full bar and a restaurant, basically it's, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot that could go wrong, right? Like, how do you, uh, oh. it, it's impressive that you can manage to create a really good customer experience with all that, you know, you know, what sort of planning goes into making all those different components work together? Yeah, you know, it, it's a good question. And I appreciate that. I certainly think that what makes Five Iron special is that we go and do all of that stuff, right? We're running a restaurant, we're running a bar, we're also running a lesson academy, we're running a fitting company, we're running a membership, right? right? Um, we're running a kids program, we're running, you know, charity events, we're running corporate events, you need, so there's a lot going on. And it's, it's tough, you have to, you know, the staff has to be able to cater to some guy that wants to, or, or gal that wants to ask questions about club face or, or any of the 50 track man numbers. But they also have to be able to cater and explain that we have an awesome like seasonal menu and everything's made from scratch and and this is the cocktail today. And also, if you want to, you know, I was there. Someone wanted a sex on the beach, right? Like you have to also kind of figure out how to make that cocktail too while you're at it. So there's there's a lot going on. It takes a lot of training, but I think that at the end of the day, I like to think at least at the end of the day, that's what sort of makes us special and that's the the five hundred experience. Um, even things like club storage. A lot of people who are thinking about an indoor concept, like ah, do we need club storage? I don't know if you need club storage, but it's really nice if you're a member that you come and your bag sitting at your bay and your coffee's made the way that you want it. And, and you know, that there are razors in the bathrooms and warm towels and things like that, right? So um, it is a lot, but I think that we we sort of pride ourselves on that and and lean into it. But uh, it takes a lot of training and work on the back end and a whole team of people that do a great job. Yeah, yeah. I mean it as a total compliment because a really premier customer experience and not only for the serious golfer but also just for a new golfer who may be too intimidated to go to a club somewhere and, and might not know what to do and, and that's what I really like about Five Iron is that it just makes it accessible to people who wouldn't ordinarily know what you know even know where to start. To totally I mean I was there Saturday working and and just roaming around I taught multiple customers the difference between a seven iron and a sand wedge right just no no idea like no idea what a fairway is no idea what what expectation should be and I love that like I think that's an awesome piece of what we do and it's really important and it's it's growing you know we, I think a lot of companies talk about growing the game of golf and and growing the consumer and this you know now these days golf is booming but there's so many more people out there who haven't been introduced to golf in an accessible way and it's just a really accessible way tiger woods could be next to you and you don't really have an idea you're hitting your own ball into the screen and you don't have to go look in the woods there's none of that and it's just a way to sort of build some small level of golf acumen where you can then go feel comfortable going to you know from there it's like you go to a top golf or a driving range and from there all of a sudden you're playing outside and you're buying golf clubs and you're joining as a private member of some course and you're you know you becoming a consumer of golf, right? So, and we've seen so, so many of those stories and that's why every single time I'm doing that, it's just a really exciting. I feel proud that that, that that person is there and we have an opportunity to be their first experience at a game that we all love. I think that's really cool and it's just so important and we talk about it all the time. That customer leaves having a good experience. They might come back for a golf lesson. They might go to the drive range. The next time someone invites them to golf, they might go do it. If they have a bad experience there and they kind of don't have fun and their first experience of golf is, is poor, they're, they're not they're not coming back and they're never going to listen to this podcast because they're going to hate golf. Right. So we want them to listen to this podcast, which means that person needs to have a really welcoming um, environment for the, for the first time that they're playing. I was also impressed because I, I'm, I'm a guy, you know, I like a, a beer or a cocktail and at the only five iron I had been to before the DC one, I'd been to the Baltimore location. Uh, but I was impressed with the size of the bar. You've got a pretty significant bar and a bar area which I think is going to be a sneaky place for even if you aren't hitting any any balls to grab a drink with that that may be not as crowded as some of the, the normal bars that people know before and after events up the street of the Capital One Arena. Well, music to my ears. If you could just keep keep telling everyone this, that would be amazing. Um, the we we obviously like there's an intimidation factor of like what is this place kind of thing and, and going to the bars. But yes, we have two bars actually there, and I hope they're packed with people that are just hanging out at the bar. I mean, you saw the TVs. We have massive massive tvs like 100 inch whatever like the largest tv you can think of is those are the tvs that we have there 
there are TVs around every single bay. So I certainly hope that people are using it that way. And at least Alex, we know that you'll be there uh, drinking at the bar, which is, which is a good start. But yeah, I think that as people kind of figure it out to be that bar and they're really, you know, I think our prices are pretty reasonable. We try to keep the prices, you know, fairly reasonable in terms of like bar pricing and things like that for the beer and the trans we have transfusions on tap there, which is awesome. So on tap, you know, yes, on tap transfusions on tap, uh, mix it ourselves and uh, not me, but they figured out how to do it. And I poured, you know, 200 of those on Saturday. So people, people were loving that. It's one of those things you're playing indoor golf. You're like, what is this? I don't understand. And it's like, Oh, transfusions. I, I understand that. And uh, let's have a few of those. So yeah, I mean, I really, really, really hope that we get that bar scene. The food's good. You know, we we make everything from scratch. Everything's homemade in, in our locations for the most part. And the chef's great. People don't even really think of that because it's like, oh, this is a golf place bar. It's like, oh, you guys have food that you make there too. So um, hopefully people use it that way. And certainly, you know, first beers on me for everyone, everyone that heads out there. Love it. Um... I know you had a question lined up, Alice, but I'm, I'm kind of curious, changing changing course a little bit. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, you, you've told kind of your origin story in some other podcasts. We don't have to go super depth, deep into that. People can find it. But I, I'm curious, kind of just the arc of the business, because if I, I'm correct, Logan told me you guys also opened up Pittsburgh yesterday. You have plans to like go to at least a couple more cities. So business is booming, it seems but kind of like just the arc of the business from the idea, the timing and the speed in which now you are booming business. And I don't know how many cities. Yeah. Booming, booming is a strong word. I appreciate that as well. Uh, COVID COVID has been a little bit rough. I think they just reinstituted mask mandates in DC. So that's, that's fun to deal with. Um, but I, I appreciate that the kind words, I think that it's really about like the, like building the right team and getting the right people invested in, in the vision and, and what we're doing. And really from there, like people move up within the company and, you know, our CEO that we just promoted started as a roamer, which is our, our lowest position, I guess you would say like serving drinks and everything like that. Our, you know, the, the CEO of the fitting lab is same thing started out as an, an hourly person roaming around. So just, growing internally and, and having the right people that understand what we're about and just obsessing over the customer experience and making sure every customer leaves happy and engaged. And look, we're not perfect at that by any means, but really try. And I think getting the right people in those positions to keep spreading the culture and, and, you know, attitude that we, we've tried to do from day one, I think is important. I mean, not even, this isn't the origins, I guess, of the story, but talking about like how, how you open, I think a lot of companies these days, you know, they get to raise $60 million and start with their like corporate team or things like that, or they have investors. And we didn't really have that luxury when we started. So it was, you know, the four, four co-founders were there opening at 5.30 in the morning, closing at 1 a.m. and doing everything. So we made the guacamole. We, you know, help people with the Sims. We signed up the first members, cleaned the bathrooms. You know, that was before there was a cleaning staff or before there was hierarchy on location, even like a general manager. That wasn't a word that we, we had used back then. So we literally did it all back then. And I think that that helped sort of as we grow to, to sort of like remember how we got here, which was really caring about the customers and whatnot. We can build, I mean, you saw the location. It's a beautiful location and the new locations, we put more and more money in. You can have all the technology in the world, but if you don't have the right people that are caring about the customers and, and making sure that they have a good time, it, it doesn't matter how, how pretty the bar is, right? So, but because we did all of that, we can, I can go and I still do, like I said, I go to, was in DC and I'm, I'm clearing plates and doing everything like that. I think that just helps build that culture. So I would say there's a secret to what we're doing. It's sort of just doing it ourselves and, and whatnot. And uh, I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but that's sort of how we, we got here. In terms of like the timeline, just going back to your actual question, I don't know, like a year to two, by the time you come up with an idea to find the right real estate, to find the contractor, to learn all the things that you have no idea about, like, oh, landmarks matters or the department of health, or, you know, how do you deal with unions for construction? So there's enough learning pains, especially the first time that you're doing, I think any type of, you know, four wall, like brick and mortar type business, the only way to learn is, is by doing it. You touched on, on COVID for a minute and, and the pandemic and how I'm curious how that's impacted your business. So I know in DC, for instance, we're recording this on Friday, July 30th, 
and tomorrow, I, I think if I heard right, they're, they're instituting a mask mandate in DC again, starting tomorrow. Can you talk about just how it's impacted Five Iron? Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it's, it's tough, right? The, the corporate events and the bachelor parties and like all the social distancing, I mean, we're closed for a ton of months and the rules change and every city is different. So it's, and we follow the rules, right? We want to make sure everyone's safe. It's not, it's not like we're saying we disagree. It's just, it's just tough for businesses, right? To be opening and closing and then opening again, you order all the food to open and then you have to throw it out. You order the cake, you have to throw it out. Um, you rehire staff and then, you know, you, you either have to keep paying them or you kind of have to furlough them or whatever. It's just been a roller coaster dealing with all of that. And then, you know, just in general to, you know, for the companies and coming back to the office and anything, when you have mask mandates and things like that, it's like, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to keep pushing it back the timeline to show back up to the offices and come back in the cities, which is tough because a big portion of our business is that like happy hour after work. It's not super, super like social and fun to go in a place when people are wearing masks and serving you beer. It doesn't exactly, you know, give you that, that bar type type feeling, but it, but it is what it is. I mean, hopefully people are taking the vaccine and we're moving in the right direction here. And, uh, this thing is going away and i i really hope by the winter we're we're past this yeah everybody's everybody's hoping that obviously you're um well it, it must be frustrating because all we hear from the pandemic is that golf is booming <laughs> and it's like man it, it, I, I, you know you would think that five iron could capitalize on that movement i'm sure you are but it must be frustrating to have to comply with all the mandates too <laughs> it, it's been frustrating but i think that it's also yeah. helped us focus on yeah the serious golfer and not even the serious golfer, but the person that wants to golf. Right. So one thing when, when all the shutdowns happened, so bars and restaurants had a shutdown, but retail was kind of open. So you could do, and this is generally speaking, every city was obviously different at different times. Um, but the, we could still do lessons. We could still do club fitting and we could still have people practice. So you could have, so we really had a focus on that. It was, and we've always said we're for the serious golfer or for the entertainment person, but it was like, well, there's no entertainment person right now. Like you can't socialize. You can't come in groups. It's individuals coming. You have to wear a mask. Nobody's drinking. Everything's closed. How can we still stay in business? Was really the, the question. And it meant we had to, you know, rely heavily on the instruction and, and that boomed. Right. And we got better at it. We continue to get better at it. Our membership has exploded. So we haven't even talked about the membership. We're much more known for being open to the public but we have a membership, which is month to month. It's, it's $270 a month in, in DC. You get unlimited, you know, hitting time during the day and, and a, a ton of other things as well. 20% off lessons, but the, the membership boomed because people, the golf is booming. So the lessons have been exploded and the, the membership has exploded and that's been great to see. Right. So there has been that promising, um, like hint that things are going to be good. And guess what? Those people that are taking lessons and practicing when they're looking for some place to watch the game on Sunday, they're going to be like, hey, let's go to five iron hit golf balls because they're getting better at golf. They're interested in it. They know five iron. So we know that, we hope we know that eventually that it's going to lead to all of the socializing and eating and drinking and everything like that. We just have to get through the pandemic. But I, I certainly think that golf has been forever changed and, and changed for the good. Well, it's certainly exciting for, for golfers that live in the city. And I'm almost curious if you're seeing this in other cities, but, but DC is having like an in DC proper, like having a golf moment. You've got the, the National Links Trust here is getting ready to renovate the three, three golf courses in DC proper. But also we touched on before, the, the, the City Swing just opened up a new location up in DuPont Circle. You guys are just opened in, in Penn Quarter. There's also, I don't know if you've been following this, there's also this new trend of these like high-end adult putt-putt kind of mini golf putt-putt, so that's, that's a brand, but mini golf, um, big uh, cavernous kind of bars. But it's interesting, one is opened up in DuPont Circle, and then there's one that's going to open up right down the street from Five Iron and Penn Quarter in the old Spy Museum. Have you been following that at all? Are you seeing that in other cities? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you have swingers, putt shack, uh, there's a bunch of them. They, they do a great job. And I think that anything that is, is bringing golf to people's minds is, is good for us and good for everyone, right? Like the yeah, the great place to hit a first golf ball swingers. And, and uh, then it's like, all right, I putted this was golf is fun. Let's go to five iron, hit some, you know, full swings and take a golf lesson and things like that. And the idea of golf becoming a part of socializing, like 
is awesome, right? It, it's really changed in terms of how people think about it, especially in these city environments where it's becoming like the activity to do, right? There was like, you know, shuffleboard or ping pong or whatever kind of activities. Now it's like there are multiple golf options in, in cities to entertain and, and whatnot. I certainly think we lean more to the serious golfer side of things and cater to those people than, than those places obviously, but the, the idea of it and the concepts, I think they're going to do great. And I know we're huge fans. Do you have any plans to extend that even further to like, you know, a real golf course somewhere? I can almost envision like a program where you start someone at five iron, be a comfortable hitting golf ball, then get them out on a, maybe a range or maybe a, a par three course or a nine hole course, something like that. Yeah, I mean, there we we have a lot of great partnerships. So like Gruder Golf, who you should guys should totally have on the podcast, or for the ladies, Abby Liebenthal is awesome, um, and they do outdoor events and, and things like that. So we'll support them. We'll send our customers. That, so we have this thing like Friday nights where we'll have weekend warm up with with those ladies, and like Gruder Golf does it in all of our locations. And I'm sure they're coming to DC where it's super casual. Our pros will give little mini lessons, teach them about sand traps, whatever, and then you know, there's a Gruder golf event every month during the summer, whether it's margaritas and mulligans or whatever, you know, fun, fun name they have. And the, uh, so many of those people kind of like get introduced to golf at five iron during that casual Friday night. And then they feel better going out on the real golf course and doing it. But also, you know, we have playing lessons. We have um, pros that'll do, you know, lessons outside if, if people, people want that. But, um, and, and then, yeah, long-term, who knows where it could go in terms of, you know, partnering with, uh, outdoor places where do you see uh you know they, they talk about you always read i, I think it's in, in how a korea, in korea there's like more simu places to hit on a simulator than actual golf courses where where, where do you see this whole thing five years ten years yeah you yes. know it's funny we we heard that we our first location when we have four sims it was like revolutionary at the time to have four simulators and that was you know 2017 which isn't that long ago it feels like and people said like we, we even heard that back then that like, yeah, Korea, it's like, there's so many more, you know, there's more simulator places than coffee shops. Right. And I think that the more that we do this, I think that there's more room for five iron than people think. Right. I think that it's going to become a thing if executed properly, that is in many markets and there are multiple locations and, and concepts like this in, in multiple uh, markets. At the same time, we see places fail, right? Like it's, it really, like I said, I think people, if you think that just throwing simulators in a spot is going to work, I don't think that's true. But I think that if you execute it well and you do it right and you care about the customers, that there's plenty of room for the concept to grow in, in many, many different markets from cities to suburbs and, you know, obviously different countries as well that, that don't have as much uh, exposure, you know, screen golf as they call it as, as Korea. Sure. So we, we, we said that you're, you just opened up Pittsburgh. Where, where are the next cities? Where are you going? Yeah, so Seattle is coming end of the year. We have another location coming in Chicago uh, by the end of the year. Um, Boston, we just announced yesterday. So that's a big one. People have been saying coming to Boston forever and ever. It's one of the hardest cities <laughs> to find real estate, at least for us. But we, we found it. So that, that was announced uh, yesterday, I believe. So we're excited about that. And uh, hopefully some more places coming soon. But those are, those are the ones that are open. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Well, we're, we're, we're pumped that you guys chose D.C. as one of your early cities. Um, you know, Ellis and I checked it out. We look big, big fans. We'll, we'll be back there a lot. Um, so uh, congratulations on, on, on everything you've been doing with Five Iron and, and coming to D.C. And, and, and thanks for uh, spending some time with, uh, with Ellis and I. Yeah, for sure. And while I'm here, if anyone wants a, anyone wants a DM me or DM Five Iron, Free month membership on me. Just mentioned the podcast and our leagues. They start August 16th. So it'll be the first league in DC, uh, which we're always excited and, and just want to, you know, get it going. It's fun. They're usually $1,300. If anyone wants to DM me, I'll give it to you for $500. Just shoot me a DM again, mention the podcast and uh, the details are all online and, and whatnot. So DM me, mention the pod or DM uh, Five Iron and we'll, we'll absolutely take care of you. August 16th. That also puts the pressure on me to edit this podcast and get it out well before <laughs> August 16th, which I will do. Beautiful. I, I love it. Um, hopefully you're not, you know, editing it and saying that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it started last week, but, but Jared's still offering this. So, uh, uh, use it, but yeah, no, we'd love to have you guys and you guys should join the league too. It's, uh, it's on me and, uh, we'd love to have you. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Jared. Appreciate it very much.
All right, sounds good. Thanks, guys. I don't have a good golf game, but I don't really care. I'm a, I'm a regular dude living in D.C., and I want to know about D.C.-centric golf stuff. If you can tell me something that I don't already know, then that is great for me. I don't want the regular stuff. I want exciting stuff. I want different stuff. I don't want stuff I can't hear elsewhere. But I want it to be about D.C. golf.